High-density polyethylene grocery bags are a ubiquitous feature of modern society. Hundreds of millions of plastic bags are used every year in the United States, and four out of five grocery bags are made of plastic. This is no coincidence. High-density polyethylene bags offer performance that cannot be achieved with other bagging materials. A 5-gram plastic bag can carry 17 pounds while costing less than a penny and being only 15 microns thick. The ability to elongate also makes plastic bags attractive as they can conform to the shape of the item they are carrying, making them less difficult to carry themselves. Furthermore, plastic bags are tear-resistant and near-waterproof. Most grocery bags are made of high-density polyethylene. Polyethylene is what its name suggests, polymerized ethylene. A polymer is a chain of molecules. The long chains don't just connect linearly, but by branching, too. These interactions make the material properties of the polymerized material much different than the unpolymerized molecules. High-density polyethylene branches less often than other forms of polyethylene, which aids in its uniform crystallization, resulting in the final material being more dense. The production line for plastic bags begins where the oil or gas is pumped from the earth. The precursor to polyethylene, ethane, is first extracted from crude oil and natural gas. The ethane is then taken through the polymerization process. In this process, a catalyst is used to encourage ethane monomers to form chains. Once the polymerization process is complete, the material is cooled to a solid temperature, extruded, and then cut into granules that can be used for many different applications. Plastic bag manufacturers often start their production cycle using these granules. The beads are heated to a molten state and mixed to a homogeneous melt. A process called blow extrusion blows a film of molten high-density polyethylene upward into a tube shape. This tube cools as it ascends the factory, often rising two or three stories before being fed into a system of rollers that stretch, fold, and cut the material into the desired rectangular geometries. To create a bag shape, a machine tamps and heats the edges of two sheets of high-density polyethylene laid on each other. After this, after this, the main design of the plastic bag is complete. However, there are several optional processes that can take place before or after this step. For example, many plastic bags have handles. These are added to the plastic bags by a, by a simple cutting tool that presses out the handle shapes into the bags as they move along the line. Another common feature of grocery bags is their logos. Designs are added using rolling dies that are covered in ink that cures very quickly as the bag rolls by. The blow extrusion process is the main step in creating plastic bags. The different processing parameters of this step greatly affect the mechanical property. Parameters to consider are the blow up ratio, which has to do with the rate at which the tube ascends the factory, the melt temperature, and the output rate. Changing these parameters can greatly affect the mechanical properties of the material, so it's important to find parameters that work best to meet the day-to-day -day needs of grocery shoppers and other bag users alike. The majority of processing for plastic bags is focused on creating a workable, high-density polyethylene thin film. Any plastic packaging, wrapping, or liner goes through a very similar process. Rolled films from blow-extruded plastics are used for garbage bags and freezer bags, cooking wraps, and wrapping for everything from food to electronics. Plastic bags are a unique creation that would be hard to manufacture in other ways. Different bag materials do exist, however, illustrated by the common question of paper or plastic. However, paper bags cost four to five times as much as the simple plastic bag, have very poor tear resistance, are not waterproof, are heavier, and do not conform to the shape of the material that is being placed inside of them, meaning they take up more room in your car and are harder to get into your house. To compare paper and plastic, I created a test 
where I used 15 pound weights and paper and plastic bags to see which one held up. The plastic bag took the 15 weight fine, the pounds fine, even when jostled up and down. The paper bag also took this 15 pounds fine. However, I did hear cracking uh, and tearing a little bit when I was uh, doing that test. Note that this isn't even really a fair test because this plastic bag weighs probably 10 times or more less than that paper bag. You can see the plastic bag is stretching a bit at the handles, but it's managing to hold up 30 pounds without breaking. I'm not sure if I could get that from my garage to my house though, without it breaking. And here we have a final test, and upon lifting the paper bag, it breaks, doesn't even hold up. The tensile strength of high density polyethylene is far greater than that of paper substitutes. Plastic bags have been a useful tool for half a century. The process to make them may be simple, but this simplicity underlies the reasons they are so popular for retailers and manufacturers alike. At a penny a bag, they are incredibly affordable. They can be manufactured at rates in the hundreds per minute per machine. Each bag can hold upwards of 17 pounds, 2,000 times their own weight. All the while, they are fairly tear resistant, waterproof, and even reusable when you need to pick up after Fido. I can see a new horizon underneath those days in the sky. I'll be with you.